Matthew's battle with brain cancer seems never ending. Latest scans reveal he has another four deadly tumours. Surgery is now his only hope. Over the years, the Fiddicks have spent tens of thousands of dollars mortgaging their home, selling their car and fundraising so Matthew can keep having the operations that keep him alive. Once again, the family is leaving Perth and flying across Australia to Dr. Teo. This time, Matthew is going in style. This is very exciting, isn't it, Matt? It's Matt's okay. favourite cars in the world. The two <laughs> favourite things, it's a Holden and it's a police car. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> got to be a Holden for this. Come and have That's a seat, mate. Board, Matt. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, are you going to put the handcuffs on him? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put the handcuffs on you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, <are they>? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? what about my Ford? I made this race over on my computer, right? Yeah. And now I've got that. What? I'd rather push, I'd rather push a Holden than drive a port. Yeah, thanks very much. Leaving home is hard. Behind the smiles, everyone knows this might be the last time they're all together. How are you? Good to see you. So how Over you two years, Matthew has had four operations and ten tumours removed by the man he calls Dr Charlie. Is that the best you can know? Walk, walk as strongly and as... The trouble is that every time you operate, you may take away some, some of his neurological function and functionality and ability to walk, ability to swallow and hear and you know, things like that. But uh, anyway, you know, after the last operations, I, I virtually told you they'd be ch you know, chip shots and we'd be able to get in there and get them out with very little risk. And that was the case because of, of the location of those occurrences. Now, some feeling that this is actually a completely different ball game. Before Dr. Teo decides whether he'll operate this time or whether it's just too dangerous, he wants to see up-to-date scans. We're going to have an MRI now and still we don't know quite what we're facing and from what Charlie said this morning, we know it's a lot worse than it's been every other operation. So we'll have an MRI now, and we'll go back and see Charlie in his room. He'll tell us what's what. And that's probably what I'm more nervous about. OK, Matthew, this time the table's moving, and this scan goes for two minutes, very still. I think this time's a little bit harder than each other time, but we'll be okay because Matt's so determined. I mean, he just sees it as an adventure because he's such a good kid. Another 10 minutes, so just try and have a rest and try not to do anything To start off with, this is the tumour. The tumour is this white blob here, yeah. which is coming up to this level here, and it's probably separate to this tumour here, yeah. which is in juxtaposition to the brain stem. It's, you know, it abuts up against the brain stem. Okay. Okay, so listen, let's just talk about it now. Uh, I think, uh, well, I think we should go ahead. I have concerns. 
and I'm going to have to either peel a tumour off the brain stem or actually get into the brain stem and maybe cause a little bit of damage when I get into the brain stem. So you're looking at probably a risk of about 10%, uh, which is not insignificant because we normally say to people there's a risk of about 1%, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is not insignificant risk because of the close proximity to the brain stem of that, of that one that you saw. Are you okay there, Matthew? He wants to go ahead? Good boy. Okay, yeah. right here. Great, Charlie, Charlie. thanks. That's what we wanted to hear.